I'm about to tell you a story you've probably never heard. It isn't a fairy tale, not a fantasy, and there's absolutely nothing mythical about it. But it's incredible. It's a tale of courage, patience, and reflection, told through the experiences of three young men, travelers, as it were, on the road to redemption. This is a story that begins from God and ends at you. जब दुनिया से नेकियां खत्म होना शुरू हो जाती हैं जब इंसान अपने नफ्स का गुलाम बनना शुरू हो जाता है जब अल्लाह ताला और इसके बंदों के हुकूक इंसान भूलना शुरू हो जाता है जब रोहानियत की आंख अंधी होना शुरू हो जाती है तो उस वक्त अल्लाह ताला अपनी सुन्नत के मुताबिक अपने खास बंदे जो उसके इश्क व मोहब्बत में डूबे होते हैं भेजता है दुनिया में ताकि दुनिया को दुनिया की गलाजतों के बारे में बताएं और उन्हें उनके پیدائش के मकसद से आगाह करें उनको तकवा की राहें दिखाएं और उन्हें अपने खुदा का इबादत गुजार बनाएं उन्हें बुरे اخلاق और गुनाहों से खबरदार करें और उन्हें नेकियों के रास्ते दिखाएं सलाम चीज क्या है खुदा के लिए The three travelers begin an exciting journey, but with mixed emotions. Kind of like that inevitable feeling we all experience when we're leaving something dear behind. The only thing they decided to take ahead were memories. When I was growing up, I was learning about different religions. I just didn't know which religion that it was. Later on, when I decided that I wanted to choose one of them, I didn't know what I should choose that religion based on. I didn't know if I should choose the one that was very heavy in meditation or the one that was very scholastic, that you became a very knowledgeable person. I didn't know which one I should choose. And the more and more I kept thinking about what religion should I choose, what belief should I have, a dominating thought came into my mind, is that choose the one that describes God the best. Before I accepted Islam, before I learned about Islam, I was worried about it. I thought it was something to be worried about. But after learning about Islam and learning that the misconceptions are just that, misconceptions, I learned that it's something to embrace and it's not something to be afraid of and it's a guide for you. There's a saying at the University of Texas. I think their motto is, What's, what starts here changes the world. They say whenever we're younger, we're very idealistic that we have this silly belief that we can change things. As I got older and became more conscious and I saw the injustice in the earth and how, pe how poorly people were doing in some areas and even here, even in my own home, I didn't want this for them. I wanted something better for them. And I wanted, I, you know, as a, as a person that's had his own amount of suffering, I didn't want to see anybody else suffering. And I wanted to help in any way I could. And I wanted to believe that we could change the world. This has given me a platform to do it. And that's what Islam is to me. Their path is a difficult one. Treacherous, in fact. And the further they go, the more they realize how absurd it was to think that they were capable of walking it alone. Something had to change. You see, as the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, once said, my idea is and the eyes can see and certify that it is true, that there is only one way to make progress. People should recognize God and have a living faith in Him. Day by day, mankind is moving further away from religion and spirituality. 
and the results are terrifying. It is my firm conviction that belief in God Almighty is the only means of salvation and the only way to bring about true peace, both at a national and international level. And so it is my deepest desire and ardent prayer that the world comes to recognize its creator and comes to follow his true teachings. Pas insan ke liye koi rasta nahi masayib o mushkilat se bachne ka swai iske khuda taala ki taraf jhuke aur khuda taala ko apna muawin aur madadgar banaye. Halat aise ho jahan har taraf insani mushkil insan mushkilat mein ghira ho jangon ke bhi khatre hain log puchte hain kis tarah bacha ja sakta hai. حضرت مسیح علیہ السلام السلام نے ایک شعر میں اس کا ذکر کر دیا آگ ہے پر آگ سے وہ سب بچائے جائیں گے جو کہ رکھتے ہیں خدائے ذل عجائب سے پیار پس اللہ تعالیٰ سے پیار رکھنا ضروری ہے ایز فار ایز دا ڈیوٹی آف مین ٹو گاڈ از کنسرن دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ ڈیوٹی از ٹو ورشپ اینڈ پرے ٹو ہم اینڈ دیٹ پریئر شوڈ ناٹ بی ٹینٹیڈ ود اینی پرسنل وانٹ ان فیکٹ Even if there were to be no heaven or hell, God should be worshipped irrespective and there should be no difference in the personal love that the created should have for its creator. Now, my sister and my brothers, they looked up to me that, like, you know, there was a period in your life where we thought you were running off a cliff, that you were meeting your doom by some of the things that you were doing, and now you've come back as a, a Muslim. And I told them that, you know, God lets a child uh, run, but he still puts a fence in the yard. And I was thankful that God put that fence, that I didn't end up running off the cliff. And I told him that God saved me. God knows the little nuances of you. The little things that like only you would know that you think about secretly. You don't tell anybody else, just between you and him. And he has a way of showing you, he knows those little nuances about you. Sometimes you don't even know them about yourself. And he shows them just in the right way. So just to remind you like, hey, not only was I listening to you whenever you were praying, but whenever you were just passing your day, living your normal life, he goes, I was paying attention then too. And I brought it up here just to show you that I'm paying attention to the little things. I've accepted the Messiah, uh, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian, because he came with a message of peace. He came with a message that teaches us to develop relationships with God. Very early on in accepting Ahmadiyyat, I realized that it was the books of the Promised Messiah Islam that kept my faith going. When I was asked once that, would you ever consider leaving Islam? Would you ever consider walking away from all of this? I simply said, after reading the things that I've read, there's no way that that's ever going to happen. The thing that's going to capture, that captured my heart, is the living God. Nobody else has this. You can, go, you can go do good anywhere. You can be persecuted in a lot of groups, right? But you can't get that living God. That, that is ours for this age. The travelers are fatigued. It's a bitter cold night and they've arrived at a place where the path diverges and they must decide how to proceed. 
They're grateful for the opportunity to rest while they deliberate, but a sudden sense of fear begins to overwhelm them. It's misery and regret cloaked in hope and joy. We know this feeling all too well. Remember, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, once said that Satan calls towards falsehood, injustice, passions, vain hopes, and pride, whereas God calls towards high morals, patience, devotion, sincerity, faith, and success. Man stands between these two attractions. Ever since the creation of Adam, Allah, the Almighty, had determined that those who associate with Satan would break off their relationship with God Almighty. Therefore, the first thing that the Prophet Messiah al-Islam told us when we accepted Ahmadiyyat was to develop a relationship with Allah the Almighty. And, this, and he stated that Allah the Almighty has established Jamaat Ahmadiyya so that those who join this Jamaat are the ones who establish a special relationship with Allah the Almighty. He said, there is a custom in this world that among two friends, a friend does not want the other to keep friendship with his enemy. Similarly, Allah's self-esteem would not tolerate that one should claim friendship with Allah the Almighty and promise to follow his commandments after taking bath at the hand of the Prophet Muhammad and yet associate any partner with Allah. This is a fundamental commandment in the Holy Quran that one who associates partners with Allah cannot be a Muslim. You know, the funny thing about shaitan is God created him. Right, this, this, this force that we're up against, right? Like, it's a creative force. And so, even though it seems like the odds are so stacked against us, and that Shaitan and his, I guess his uh, followers or generals or leaders of discord, right, they seem like unbeatable right now. But like, God hasn't set something up for us that we can't, that we can't beat. And if there, wasn't, if there wasn't something to fight against, every good story needs an antagonist, right? And the greater the antagonist, the greater the story. And so who's got a greater foe to defeat than us in this age? In Islam, the concept of shaitan is that it is an open enemy of yours, that it's not something you can't see or feel. It's something that you should imagine is present in front of you. It's whether or not we feed into that evil, it's whether or not we do um, what shaitan is, is, is making easy for us. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. There's, a, there's an idiom from indigenous people that I've met here in Canada. And that is that every person has two wolves inside of them. They have a good wolf and a bad wolf. And you can ask the person, well, which one takes over? Which one is the one that's in control? Is it the good wolf or the bad wolf? And the wise indigenous man said, it's the one that you feed. Do you feed the good wolf? Do you give the good wolf food or do you give the bad wolf food? So it speaks to a person's righteousness. It speaks to their taqwa. Do you want to do good or do you want to feed shaitan? You know, there's so many things that in Islam that gives, me, that gives me hope. God's forgiveness, God's pardoning. You know, in the Holy Quran, God says, he says, I'm the most forgiving and I'm the greatest partner. It's a heck of a statement. Because he's saying, is, I mean, think to yourself, who's the most forgiving person that you can think of? No matter what you do to them, they'll always forgive and they'll always accept you back. Right? So God Almighty is saying, I'm more forgiving than them. I'm a greater partner than them. I'm more off for turning than them. As many times as you turn me away, I turn back even more. All this is is redemption. You know, Promised Messiah, he said that, oh my God, one of the most beautiful things he said that captured me from the very beginning, and it's still, you know, still to this day, he said that as a person makes a change in themselves, so does God make a change in the way that he manifests himself to them.
change. It's been difficult for these travelers, but their journey has compelled them to. They've trekked across landscapes unknown, crossed bridges over troubled waters, and climbed mountains of hardships. They've learned. They've changed. But they crave rest. They crave comfort. For as the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, once said, What does man wish for in this world? His greatest wish is always that he should live a comfortable life. For this, there is only one way open to him, and that is the way of taqwa, that is righteousness. जो छोटे-छोटे गुनाह हैं, अगर उनको तोजो नहीं दोगे, सुस्ती दिखाओगे, तो वो बड़े गुनाह बन जाते हैं। बजाय जो छोटे लगने वाले गुनाह हैं, फरमाया कि सगायर वही दाग छोटा है जो बढ़कर आखर कुल मुंह को सेवा कर देता है। कुबजोरियां हैं, बाज़ चीजें हैं, इंसान समझता है कोई बात नहीं, मामूली सी चीज़ है। फरमाया मामूली न समझो, यही बड़ा गुनाह बन जाएगी, और फिर जिस तरह एक दाग मुंह को सेवा कर देता है, ये बड़ा गुनाह बन के तुम्हें सेवा कर देगा। As members of the community of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the fear of Allah should take priority and precedence over all of our thoughts and reflections. Our views, opinions, and beliefs should all be rooted in the fear of Allah, the Almighty. Allah Ta'ala ki badi azeem hasti hai. Usko humesha yaad rakho. Aur khauf khate ro. Tumare dil mein khauf hona chahiye. Khauf is liye ki pehle bata diya ki Allah Ta'ala piyar karne wala hai. Pas mutaki jo hai, wo sab se zada Allah Ta'ala ki azmat ko yaad karta hai. Aur ye khauf rehta hai ki Allah Ta'ala mujhe naraz na ho jaye. Rather, it is essential that every Ahmadi forms a personal bond with Allah and seeks true righteousness. This is why the Prophet Muhammad has said that until his Jamaat does not adopt righteousness or taqwa, it cannot attain success and salvation. Thus, you should always seek to improve yourselves and to be true Ahmadi Muslims. Every single one of your youths should seek to protect his or her faith and to always maintain a direct connection with Allah, the Almighty. جو دل ناپاک ہے خاک اول کتنا ہی پاک ہو وہ دل خدا کی نگاہ میں قیمت نہیں پاتا یہ بہت سوچنے والی بات ہے بہت غور کرنے والی بات ہے بہت فکر والی بات ہے کہ اپنے دل کو ٹٹولے ہر ایک اپنے دل کو ٹٹول سکتا ہے اگر دل ناپاک ہے تو باتیں بھی بھگ جتنی مرضی اچھی ہم کر رہے ہیں خدا کی نگاہ میں اس کی کوئی حصیت نہیں بس ہر ایک اپنے اندر غور کرے کہ اس کا اندرونہ کیسا ہے اور اس کی باطنی حالت کیسی ہے اگر ہماری جماعت بھی خدا نہ خاصتہ ایسی ہے کہ اس کی زبان پر کچھ ہے اور دل میں کچھ ہے تو پھر خاتمہ بالخیر نہ ہوگا بیفور اکسپٹنگ اسلام آئی وزنٹ دی پرفیکٹ پرسن دی وی آل سٹرائیو تو بی مائی مورل کمپس وز اللہ سکیو And Islam, through the teachings of Islam, through the teachings of the Holy Prophet uh, and through the Promised Messiah Islam, I've been able to improve my character or at the very least become more cognizant of my moral defects. So Islam teaches me that you make mistakes and you repent for them. Um, now that doesn't mean that our sins are forgiven it just means that you need to recognize the mistakes you make and do something about them to help change them. So as I was growing up, there was a lot of bad habits that I got. And when I became a Muslim and they would tell me that, you know, you can't eat that, you can't drink that, you can't say that, I thought this is going to be a lot of work. Maybe it's easier for those people who are raised as a Muslim who are taught from a very young age these things, but being taught this at 22 years old, don't look, don't touch, don't taste these things, I had already done it before, and now it all has to stop. They told me that what awaits a person who gives up all these things, it's like being born again. 
those things that build the barriers, it builds that drape. That's what sin is. That's all it is. It's the things that create these barriers and they, they make that veil between us and the Creator thicker, right? Because God is still here. It's just our actions that separate us from Him. And so whenever we, we do the right things or we remove the wrong things, what we start to do is we start to lift that veil a little bit more and more, right? The screen lets in a little bit more light. And then we got to start to have those experiences that bring conviction and certainty. I am very fortunate that I believe in the Promised Society Islam. I believe that God paved a path that I could not veer from, that led me straight to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Islam. And I could not pronounce the destination for myself until very recent. I remember the first time that I heard his name. I had to have them repeated a few times. But I could appreciate at that time that I was in the right place. Mankind always asks himself over and over again, what's the purpose of life? It's a great question, right? The living God, this is the purpose of life. And you're not going to get it anywhere else. I've tried, trust me. But go experience for yourself. Silence submerges them, the three weary travelers, each diving within his own soul to find the answers he seeks. How much longer must they tarry? They're just eager to see a glimpse of their destination. But never forget that the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, says, Realize this, that as it is not possible for us to see without eyes or hear without ears or speak without the tongue, so it is not possible for us to set eyes on our beloved God without the aid of the Holy Quran. Until and unless you know your own religion, the insight of your own religion, the basic teachings of your own religion, you will find it difficult to understand Islam. The Muslim religious scripture, the Holy Quran, was revealed to the Holy Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. There is a declaration from God in this scripture that verily it is we who have sent down this exhortation and most surely we are its guardian. This claim is as truly established today as it was 1400 years ago and not an iota has been changed in this book. If you study it yourself, you will come to the conclusion that its teaching is the word of God. Everything that I learned about Islam was out of the Holy Quran. When I decided to accept Islam, it was only by what I read in the Holy Quran. The Quran that was the direct revelation of God to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a guide for everyone. And I feel that anybody who would adopt Islam, anybody that would adopt the Quran, they'd see what I see and they would be able to have a better chance of being happy. There's hope in the Quran, there's hope in Allah and there's hope for everyone. They just have to look at it from an unbiased perspective. The more I started to read about it or read the Holy Quran, I felt like it was God telling me who He is describing himself as the most merciful, most gracious, most forgiving, most compassionate. And I couldn't help feeling like this is the God I want to believe in, that this is the God that I want to know. I, you know, all of these things, they always go back to the Holy Quran. Always, all of them. There were, there were so many different things, but they always, like just like any other path, the path always leads right back to the Holy Quran. You know, the books, you know, the book of the Promise of Silas that I first read was the philosophy and teachings of Islam. And it's, it, it is basically a commentary on the Holy Quran and how it deals with five very deep questions. 
The Promised Messiah Islam, in his book, The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam, teaches us that there are three states of man. There is the, the animal-like sinner state, there is the second reforming state, and then there is the third spiritual state. Um, those who are able to leave the animal sinning state where your base instincts are violence and sin and you cross into the reforming state, that's when you start to become um, more concerned about your behavior, more concerned about things that you do so that you can improve them. I picked up the philosophy of teaching of Islam and there was a question. What is the purpose of man's existence? And I thought to myself, this is the answer I've been waiting for my whole life. My whole life I've been getting such a vague answer for the purpose of our creation. Why are we here? What is all this for? And here in one book, out of over a hundred books, is a, the answer. What is the purpose of my existence? So I started telling everybody the purpose of our existence. We have to recognize God. We have to build a relationship with God. It wasn't as complex. We didn't have to be rich. We didn't have to know everything. We didn't have to know everything. We just had to know one thing. And that's who is God? That question that I have been asking for so many years was found in chapter one. The journey continues, but the three travelers know that if they wish to continue in strength, it will require a sacrifice. And not just any sacrifice, but one that is equivalent to the happiness that they seek. So they decide to pledge their allegiance and make an oath to carry on. As the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, once said, the most important point of Ba'ath, the pledge of allegiance, is repentance. When a man is a sinner, his friends are of a certain kind, and when he becomes virtuous, his friends change. The mystics have named this transformation death. We have been in the past, and 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 we have been اور حقیقی تقوی و تہارت اپنے اندر قائم کرنے کی کوشش کرنے کا عہد کرتے ہیں تاکہ دنیا کو اس حقیقی خدا کا راستہ دکھائیں جو زمین و آسمان کا مالک ہے جو کل کائنات کا مالک ہے اور جس کے آگے جھکنے سے ہی دنیا کی حقیقی نجات ہے اس عہد کو نبھانے کے لیے ہمارے ہر وقت یہ پیش نظر رہنا چاہیے کہ ہمارا مقصد کیا ہے جب تک اس مقصد کو اپنے پیش نظر نہیں رکھیں گے جب تک اٹھتے بیٹھتے دنیا کی آسانیوں اور آسائشوں پر نظر رکھنے کے بجائے جب تک دنیا کی مادی چیزوں پر نظر رکھنے کے بجائے جب تک دوسروں کے مال پر حسد کی وجہ سے نظر رکھنے کے بجائے اپنے خدا کے احکامات پر نظر نہیں رکھیں گے ہم اپنے عہد بیت کو پورا کرنے والی نہیں کہلا سکتے ہم اپنے آپ میں اور اپنی نسلوں میں اور اپنے ماحول میں وہ فضا پیدا نہیں کر سکتے جس کے لیے حضرت مسیم عبد الصلاۃ والسلام مبوس ہوئے Bath was very difficult for me. I looked at that long list and I was like, I, I believe this is the truth. But I don't think I can do this, this list. And I was like, if I put my name on this paper, it would be a lie. I was like, I can't do this, not all of this. Uh, these were 10 conditions. And when I read through them, I thought, if anything, this will 
only help me improve my character if I can follow these 10 conditions of bet. Um, when I signed the bet form, I, I made a promise to myself and a promise to God that I would do my best to maintain these 10 uh, rules, these 10 guidances that were given to us by the Promised Messiah. When I read those 10 conditions, I thought that this is going to be a very difficult thing, but if I tried and I put all my effort and I asked God for help, that it was possible. But I had to read them more and more to remind myself what is expected from me. The only way I was able to sign it was that I was going to treat it as a checklist in my life. That I was going to look back at it and, and see, if, see which ones I, w I was doing well at and which ones I needed to improve in. And, you know, the power of a covenant is mentioned over and over again in the Holy Quran. A friend of mine, a Syrian refugee here in Canada, he came and I explained to him the conditions of bet. I said, these are the conditions of bet and this is the requirement uh, to follow these, to become an Amdi Muslim and to be a part of the community. And he said to me, James, um, a true Muslim should do not only all of these but more. He said that this is the, the very minimum that a Muslim should subscribe to in his day-to-day -day life. And uh, then we embraced and he accepted Jamaat Ahmadiyya, Alhamdulillah. And that was one of the warmest experiences in my life. The Promised Messiah, one of the greatest ideas that he put forward to me is he goes, you can find out in this life, right now, you can experience heaven in this life. You get to experience Allah Ta'ala in this life, right? And that makes it a lot easier to make those sacrifices that it takes to get there. With tired eyes but smiles on their faces, the three travelers reached their first destination. Unbeknownst to them when they embarked, they were being guided to the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. But this journey would continue. For the founder of Ahmadiyya, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, once said that our community does not require people who possess the physical strength of mighty wrestlers. We require people who possess the strength to continue working towards the transformation of their morals. <laughs> جسموں کو فتح کرنے سے کوئی غرض نہیں ہے ہم نے دلوں کو تسخیر کرنا ہے جسموں کے قیدی تو کسی وقت بھی رہائی پا کر اپنے آپ کو آزاد کروا سکتے ہیں اور کروا لیں گے لیکن جن کے دل تسخیر ہو جائیں وہ ہمیشہ کی غلامی اور قید کو بخوشی قبول کرتے ہیں پس حقیقی اسلام کو نہ ہی کسی کی جان لینے کی ضرورت ہے نہ ہی قیدی بنانے کی بس ہم میں سے ہر ایک کو یہ عہد کرنا چاہیے کہ جو کام حضرت وسیم عہد علیہ السلام ہم سے لینا چاہتے ہیں ہم اس کے لیے اپنے آپ کو پیش کریں اسلام چیز کیا ہے خدا کے Our goal and object objective should be nothing less than to establish peace in every village, town, or city of every nation in the world. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community has always strived to fulfill this objective, and to this end, we propagate what we consider to be the key ingredient to peace, which is a firm belief that we are all the creation of God Almighty and He created mankind so that they would recognize Him and fulfill the rights of one another. We are certain that if mankind comes to this realization, true and long-lasting peace can prevail. Peaceful people, both from amongst Muslims 
and non-Muslims are joining the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. They are becoming Ahmadi Muslims only with the desire to gain the love of Allah and for the sake of attaining true peace and contentment. Our Khalifa has an incredibly difficult job. You know, when I learned about the busy schedule of the Khalifa and traveling and the sermons and lectures and meetings with dignitaries, I couldn't believe that one man accomplishes all this. Well, Hazur is not just responsible for one nation or one small group of people. He's responsible for an entire planet. Him more than anyone inspires me on this earth because if you pay attention to what he's telling the world, if you pay attention to what he's doing, he's trying to help everybody avoid sin. He's trying to help everybody avoid war. He's trying to help everybody develop a relationship with God. Many great people have come on this earth that have shooken up the world, but, but their movement dies with them. But this movement keeps going on generation after generation. The plan hasn't changed. The goal hasn't changed. We're just getting closer to it. And this is Azur's job, it, like, to my limited understanding, right, is that we keep trying to, to keep the original mission and achieve it. And by following that leader, that one appointed by God, this is how we're going to get there. It is said that traveling leaves you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller. The tale of three young men on the road to redemption is one of many. It's a tale that begins in doubt and ends in clarity. It begins in fear, yet ends in hope, security, and happiness. As the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, said, a righteous one can find happiness in a thatched hut, while a worldly person cannot even find it in grand castles. You must remember that true happiness is never the lot of a worldly person. The fountainhead of true happiness is taqwa. You know, happiness is a state of mind. My uh, daughter came to me upset one time and she said that this person upset her. I said, no, you decide. You decide if you want to be upset and you decide if you want to be happy. Yeah, I'm happy. It took a while though. To be honest, it, it, it took work. I think like, no, like any normal person, like, I think I started putting things on myself that were unnecessary. I thought too that being religious meant that you had to be very somber and never happy and a straight face. And this is, this is actually, well, at least for me personally, it hasn't been true. I'm extremely happy and I'm fortunate. Um, and I find my happiness not only in my family, but in my faith. Uh, on a daily basis, I get the opportunity to uh, speak to Allah in my, in my salat, in my prayer. And I feel that getting things off my chest, um, that before I was a Muslim, I never had the opportunity to, I feel that this is something that helps me attain happiness. I remember the first time that I prayed on my prayer mat I made sure that my feet were fully on the prayer mat and, and I didn't want to take a small step off as if I was standing on a platform raised high in the sky and that if I stepped off I would fall. So I was remembering how conscious I was to stay on the prayer mat and I'll be safe. And I feel that today, whenever I step on my prayer mat, I'm safe. I'm with God.